Hello guys, good evening once again, this is Mike Padua and we are back for our Sunday edition of our radio analysis for this uh, Sunday to Tuesday, February 11 to 13, 2024. This is our English version, actually this is the uh, weekend edition of our radio analysis and this is brought to you by Typhoon 2000 in uh, partnership with Naga College Foundation. About this power... Bank of the Philippine Islands. If you want to know more about their BPI Sustainable with You program, just click on the link here. And also uh, Avenue Plaza Hotel, the local government of Naga City, headed by our Honorable Mayor Nelson Legacion and our Honorable Congressman Gabi Bordado of the 3rd District of Camarines Sur. So let's begin with our update. Uh, just like I said, here on our latest graph set, we have another surge of the northeast monsoon and it's just uh, upon us affecting mostly uh, 75 percent of our country and uh, there's a shear line developing and the, this uh, shear line will bring uh, some light rains across the uh, Bicol region and uh, oriental mindoro may, uh, portions of uh, marinduque oriental mindoro marinduque and romblon and uh, there are also some showers over the Visayan area of Visayas uh, because of the northeast monsoon. Overall, this is a gentle surge of the monsoon. Let's hope that the shear line will not thicken. Okay, if once it thickened, it will bring lots of rainfall across the Bicol region. But so far, only light to moderate uh, rainfall is expected within the next uh, 48 hours until uh, Tuesday. So let's enjoy this. Uh, a blast of the northeast monsoon, wherein temperature is between 23 to 25 degrees, uh, with a high atmospheric pressure of 1,018 to 1,020 hectopascals, particularly here over uh, central Luzon and Bicol region. And we have a near equatorial trough here near the equator, nothing to worry about, no uh, LPAs or tropical cyclone formation are in sight. Okay. So, uh, that's the scenario right now. So far, uh, the uh, medium, uh, uh, the low to medium uh, risk of flooding and landslide remains, particularly over the Beagle region, if ever the uh, shoreline uh, thickened. Okay. So, that's the uh, graph set. Let's take a look at the uh, fast animation. There you go. That's the shoreline. You can see it looks like a ghostly. Uh, uh, clouds moving uh, from the northeast. If we check out the zoom in solar animation between uh, 2 o'clock until 7 p.m. tonight, there you go. There are some uh, very uh, small uh, or thin uh, cloudiness brought about by the northeast monsoon and the shear line, and it might bring some light rain showers, particularly those facing the Pacific coastline of Bicol region. And there is also some uh, possible uh, low-level nimbus stratus with some light showers across Cagayan Valley and the eastern sections of Central Luzon that includes Aurora and uh, Northern Quezon and also Bunduk Peninsula, Oriental Mindoro, portions of uh, uh, Romblon and uh, as well as Panay, Negros and Cebu. Uh, uh, later and summer provinces will also experience some light rainfall brought about by the northeast monsoon and the possibility of the shear line moving down okay so uh, tomorrow uh, during our next uh, uh, update we are going to show to you the latest graph set what will uh, on the movement of this shear line okay and for the uh, wind and pressure forecast from the European model, okay, according to windy.com, right now we have uh, we're experiencing uh, winds of up to 60 kph across the coastal waters and coastal areas of Luzon and up to 40 to 50 kph across Visayas, Mimaropa. Okay, so that's how uh, intense the northeast monsoon right now. But uh, due to the El Nino, the effects of El Nino, we are having some below average rainfall. 
And by tomorrow afternoon, the Northeast Monsoon will continue to uh, prevail across the country. And on Tuesday afternoon, it will slowly weaken as the high pressure moves from eastern China towards to the southeast of Japan from west to east uh, fashion. And so far, uh, by Wednesday, the northeast monsoon will again uh, weaken and we are back, uh, for, we are back to the warm easterly wind flow. Okay, so that's the latest from our wind forecast. How about the rain? So far, we expect some light showers across the uh, eastern sections of the Bicol region. And uh, it's currently, uh, if you look at the latest uh, uh, forecast from the European model, the rain forecast, the shear line is moving more to the south, affecting Catanduanes, Albay, Sorsogon, the uh, Caramoan Peninsula, or Partido District in Camarines Sur, and also uh, Masbate, Panay, Northern Negros, and Samar Provinces. These are light rain showers, but sometimes there will be uh, some amounts of heavy or moderate rainfall. And then Tuesday, as the uh, shear line continues to prevail, it will affect uh, also the whole of the Bicol region, so expect some light showers or moderate showers on Tuesday and on Wednesday as we shift to Easterlies, it will still bring some showers across the eastern sections of northern and central Luzon, including Bicol region. So uh, don't forget to bring your rain gear or umbrellas during the uh, next uh, two to three days. But uh, let's hope that it will remain light, okay, light rainfall not heavy so we will uh, uh, observe the situation in the next uh, two to three days as for the rainfall accumulation forecast most of the rainfall are concentrated across the uh, eastern sections of northern central Luzon and the Bicol region but these are more on a packet uh, style packets of rainfall okay so it's not uh, over it's not covering the whole of the affected areas, so this is only a packet of uh, rainfall. So here's the shear line. As you can see, <coughs> provinces of Albay, Sosagon, and Canandoanes, and the Partido district of Camarines Sur, and uh, over Mount Labo in Camarines Norte will feel the brunt of the shear line. And also over eastern and northern Samar, Northern Negros and Northern Panay. And uh, so that's it. Here over the eastern sections of uh, Carga and Dabo Oriental, we'll also experience some rainfall brought about by the Northeast Monsoon, where it will generate some uh, rain clouds. And uh, although they could, and the uh, possibility of some cumulonimbus or thunderstorm clouds. And as for the wave forecast for the next uh, three days, so today, tomorrow, until Wednesday, we expect wave height here of 3 to 4 meters, as well as uh, along the eastern coastal areas or coastal waters of the Philippines, it will remain between 3 to 4 meters. Although here it's around 2 to 3.5 it's still uh, rough and dangerous to small sea crafts, so fishermen, uh, please avoid uh, doing your fishing activities between uh, today until Tuesday or Monday, because on Tuesday or Wednesday, on Wednesday it will still affect the eastern sections of the country, but on Thursday, February 15, it will slowly weaken to 3 meters. Okay, oh, 2.5, 2.5 meters. The inland areas, uh, as you can see here, will also have the wave heights of around uh, 1 to 1 1.5 meters. That's the average wave heights within the inland waters of the Philippine Islands. So it will be slightly rough, okay, along the uh, water ways of the Philippine Islands. 
So there you go. Uh, but before we leave you, here's the latest from the El Nino, El Nino forecast from the Climate Prediction Center of NOAA in partnership with the Columbia Climate School of International Research Institute for Climate and Society. And for the latest, February, as of February 8, 2024, we are still under El Nino advisory. And it shows here that we are now moving into uh, neutral or normal climate within the next few months. And it's likely by uh, April to June 2024, from 100% chance of El Nino, it will be downgraded to 79%. And there will be an increasing odds of a quick turnaround from El Nino to La Nina, okay, developing between June to August 2024 at around 55 at around 55 percent okay so this is uh really the uh scenario when we have a climate change of our planet so the switch from el nino to la nina is uh on a swift mode in the past it will uh, first uh move into neutral conditions for the next 12 months but right now it looks like we are swifting it's like taylor swift okay swift okay swifting from el nino to la nina it looks like this kind of phenomenon are riding the taylor swift uh fever okay just uh, it's just a joke okay <laughs> But this is what we are seeing right now because of the climate change. Look at this. It looks like a V-shaped graphic equalizer from 100%. Come May, June, July, it will return to normal. Okay, actually it's April, May, June, around 78%. And then beginning of June, July, August, it will swift. It will switch to uh, La Nina at 55%. Then, look at this. Although this is highly uncertain yet, or uh, very low probability, but between uh, September, October, and November time frame, La Nina is already nearing 80%. So that's around 77%. So we're giving you the, we will be giving you uh, monthly updates on what will be the scenario. Let's hope that uh, it will remain neutral because uh, usually when we have this rapid swift of uh, rapid switch from El Nino to La Nina, uh, what I'm worried about are tropical cyclones. Some of them are powerful enough to cross the country, just like what happened in 2020 during the trio of tropical cyclones, Quinta, uh, Raleigh, and uh, Ulysses, okay? So these cyclones are the result of the switch from El Nino to La Nina during the year 2000. So let's uh, hope and pray that it will remain neutral for the rest of 2024. But at least you have uh, a first glimpse of what will happen during the last quarter of 2024 and into 2025. So that's the latest for this evening, late weekend update, and we'll turn again uh, within the next few days. This is Mike Padua saying uh, good day to all, stay safe always, good day, to all. good day to all, stay safe always, and thank you so much for watching our channel, God bless to all.